Hello everybody, my name is Jonathan Reeves from Innovative Vector at BIM. Today I'm going to be talking through Twin Motion and looking at the first part of our Twin Motion 2020 training course. So first of all we're going to look at the Twin Motion 2020 interface. So what you see is a side panel that you can pop out. You'll notice there's a lock if you would like to lock the panel so that it doesn't disappear. Also search dialog where you can type in what you're looking for in terms of materials or objects. The library is divided into folders with materials, landscape, objects, lights, characters, vehicles, tools and also something called the user library that we'll talk about later. If you look into, for example, the materials library, you'll see a bunch of subfolders and each of these have subsets of different materials that you can use on your project. So for example, the glass folder has a whole load of different glasses, uh, concrete folder again, quite a few different types of concrete that you can drag and drop into the drawing. As you do so, you'll notice on the right you get a very nice big preview of the material. So as well as the materials, let's have a quick look at some of the object folders. We've actually got um, a couple of landscapes you can drag those into the model and in one of the tutorials we'll do later on we'll show you how you can kind of edit and sculpt the landscape but we won't be doing that right now. So basically you can sculpt and paint the terrain with tools down here. Um, let's go back and have a quick look at things like the trees. One of the real strong points of Twin Motion is the soft landscaping, the plants and the trees. As you hover over you get a preview of the different types of tree or should we say the different sizes of trees. So for example, you just drag and drop and that appears in the drawing and they're pretty realistic. We've also got a really good library of plants um, and these are really nice sort of plants developed by a company called Xfrog who have integrated with Epic Games and the quality of them is really, really great, really high. Uh, there's also some really nice rocks and things like that you can drag into the drawing um, just to add a bit of realism to the external sort of context for your projects and your model. Under the miscellaneous menu, you'll see all sorts of things like twigs, branches, and so on. If we go into the objects menu, you'll notice that you have basically a home folder. And in there, you're going to find the bulk of the um, object libraries for things like chairs, tables, all the kind of stuff that you would find around the house that you might want to use in your architectural projects or interiors projects. If you go to the city tab, You'll find much more sort of urban things like benches, bollards, fountains, trash cans, that kind of thing, and lighting. And also under the primitives, you'll see a bunch of basic primitive shapes that you can drag into the drawing to do some rather simple things with. We'll come on to that later. We also have decals and particles, but these are a bit more advanced for adding more advanced effects, things like water as well. And um, yeah, the sounds, they're great when you're doing sort of virtual walkthroughs and tours. Under the lighting menu, you'll find a whole bunch of different types of lighting, all the usual suspects like point lights, area lights, and IES lights. And one of my favorites is the characters. Uh, this is something that's really hard to achieve in other software. Twin Motion has a really good library of both animated and also posed people. So you can basically drag these into the drawing and they'll kind of like start to react with um, movement and you can turn them around, spin them around and so on and create quite a lot of life. We'll see how that works later when we kind of get onto that part of the tutorial. So we've also got a really good library of vehicles um, some nice up to date modern cars. They look great with the different colors of paint. You can easily adjust the different colors as well. And if you look into the tools, there's a couple of nice new tools uh, as well as sections and reflection probes. Uh, we've also got the new notes tool and a new measuring tool uh, that was introduced actually the new notes tool was introduced just in 2020 so we'll have a look at those a bit later on as well finally under the user library um, at the moment there's nothing in there because this is a fresh install of twin motion but we will show you how to make your own custom objects and put them into the user library fantastic so if we go over to the right hand side of the screen and click on the arrow we can pop out the kind of the manager or the organizational tab and in here, basically, you have a little icon, uh, like an eye, next to, for example, the box, the object. And what you can do with those is you can kind of turn them on and off. Um, you can also right-click and create some extra things like um, new containers and groups and so on. Down at the bottom, if you pop up the, um, the tab from Statistics, Transform, BIM Information and Phasing, just click on the little arrow, you can kind of go through the different options there. 
um, and you can kind of like use that to not only transform the model but also things like look at statistics um, see if your computer is behaving uh, well or performing well with the demands of twin motion um, and you can set the different levels of quality and so on as well so I hope that takes you through a bit of the basics of the interface um, one really important thing is to have a quick look through the menu items and as well as going into the preferences now there's not a huge amount here um, but you will notice particularly if you go to the quality setup this is quite an important aspect so depending on the kind of PC or Mac you have with the kind of graphics card capability um, one of the probably the best things to do is click on automatic setup and that will set you up um, depending on what graphics card you have and the size of the model for different levels of performance now there are two types of interfaces a dark one and a light one uh, I have to say I much prefer the dark one try out the light one if you if you dare um, but basically yeah we've got these sort of different elements down at the bottom this is called the dock and you see different tools for different sort of contexts down on the dock there so for example on the landscape when you click onto the landscape not only can you paint the terrain um, but sculpt it as I say we'll probably come back and do that in more detail in a whole new video uh, finally down on the dock we have the import tab now the import tab is very important this is how you access and import your models from all your different types of CAD system um, for example Archicad, Revit, Vectorworks uh, or even SketchUp as well now on the second one the urban tab you can generate uh, paths you can paint the vegetation and there's a new vegetation scatter tool we'll talk about later on as well under the uh, next tab we have basically location weather and so on and then finally we've got the media tab this is how you create the images panoramas and videos also a new feature called presenter which is absolutely fantastic I'd like to look at that later with you finally when you're ready and you've created some images or videos you can go to the export tab and you can essentially load in the different elements that you would like to export okay so when you first load up Twinmotion you will notice that it often pops up with a really helpful dialogue now this is great and it immediately teaches you how to kind of access the keyboard shortcuts so basically we've got the W A S and D key also known as WASDA and these are traditional gaming keys that most people if they've done any gaming will know instinctively so we can use these to navigate around you can also use the arrow keys if you prefer we've also got Q and E which are up and down and also uh, the other arrow keys here now here you can see we've got the different ways to orbit so the middle button will pan the drawing You'll sh I'll show you that in a moment um, if we do shift in the middle button we get orbit and right click will enable us to spin our sort of head around and move uh, the view itself now you can actually change these shortcuts a little bit so that they act like different software so if you're really used to say SketchUp then you can right click um, on here and you can actually basically set those up for different softwares so I recommend probably keeping it on the twin motion settings for now um, unless you're a really avid SketchUp user so we'll kind of suppress that dialogue Twinmotion is going to now start up. So I'm just going to open up this materials room demo file. This will take a few minutes to load in and then we'll have a look at navigating around and the keyboard shortcuts required. Okay, so here we can see the demo file that ships with Twinmotion and this is something perhaps we'll have a little play with later on in the course. So basically let's start off by right clicking and we can kind of pan the view around. Now at the moment I'm experiencing a little bit of what I call lag on my computer and that's probably because I'm in the highest level of quality um, and I've only got a MacBook Pro I'm working on at the moment. Later on I'll jump onto the PC with a better graphics card. So if I click onto the preferences and open up those for a second then what we can actually do is go to quality and we can basically click automatic setup or I can drop it down to maybe more laptop which is what I'm on the medium settings now you notice the viewport is a bit faster now so basically the quality is a little bit reduced like the shadow quality and so on um, but in terms of sort of moving around it's a little bit smoother and you kind of see we can kind of navigate around the scene it's a little bit more usable so that's definitely something for those of you working on laptops I recommend perhaps reduce the level of quality a little bit now the good thing is with Twinmotion the final output quality will be actually the same depending on um, whether you're in low or medium or high 
it will all be the same but it's just really to do with the working quality and the preview quality on the screen um, I will add I am actually working on a 32 inch screen plugged into my laptop at the moment so obviously the graphics card is working an awful lot harder to do that so it's pretty cool you can see we're navigating around the scene and we've adjusted the speed quite nicely so one thing I would like to draw your attention to if you go up to the help system we can go to shortcuts and we can go to English now what that does it actually loads up um, a file which we can have a quick look at. These are the twin motion shortcuts we talked about earlier. They're both the same on the Mac and the PC. That's the great thing with twin motion. It's totally cross-platform, unlike some of the other real-time rendering software. Um, so we've got W forward, S is backwards, A is move left, D is move right, Q is up, and E is down. Now when you want to adjust the speed, all you need to do, you can either do it in two ways. You can hold down the Alt key to go faster, or you can slow it down with the control key plus whichever movement you've got. But I prefer to do it with the keys 1, 2 and 3. So they basically emulate the walk speed is number 1, the bicycle speed is number 2 and really fast driving speed 3. So those are the main shortcuts you really want to learn. Um, there are a few others that are important and we'll cover those later in the course. So for example when we want to move something we click keyboard number shortcut number 4 that's called move or translate, shall we say. Five is actually the rotate tool. Scale is six. And we can use the arrow keys to kind of move through a sequence of selected objects. One really nice shortcut that I like is F. So when you select an object, if you click F, it will fit to that particular object. A bit like zoom extents to the object. G is an important shortcut. That's the helper. What that does, it shows the help system, but it also shows things like um, the icons for things like lights, decals, and uh, things like character paths as well. So you can hide those. You can hide objects with H um, and unhide them. But also T is a very important tool. It's the material picker. Think of it as T for texture, and that will really help. Now, there's some other quite nice shortcuts you can learn down here, um, but they're probably secondary to really the other ones that we do need to learn are the orbiting commands. So we'll kind of look at that once we get back out into the real project. But by all means, you know, your traditional shortcuts that you know from other software should also work quite nicely with twin motion. So yeah, take a look at the sheets, definitely sort of try and memorize and learn some of these. Twin motion really helps to use two hands at the same time. And before you know it, you'll be flying with twin motion.